Hello again and welcome to the second half of our tutorial on lighting in hit film. I'm Axel Wilkinson and hopefully you watched part one where we covered the basic types of lights that you can use and their respective properties. In this second half of the tutorial we're going to look at creating shadows using the hit film lighting system and at the material properties of various layers and how those work along with the lights to control the appearance of those layers. So I've put together this composite shot as a starting point and we have a plane. This gray box here is a plane which I've converted to 3D here. We have a video layer which contains this stop motion of a predator figure that I did and we have our camera. Now on the video layer you'll notice this was originally a green screen clip and so if I turn these off there you can see that's the original clip and I added a mask to remove the area outside the green screen and then a color difference key and matte cleaner and spill removal just to get a nice clean key so that all that's left is our character and then I pushed the plane back to create some distance between our background and foreground if I switch to the perspective view let me grab the orbit tool you can see there we have some nice distance between our foreground and background planes with our camera out front there so that when we create a light out in front of our subject we can cast his shadow back onto that plane behind him. So let's switch back to active camera view get our selection tool and we need to create a new light layer so we'll do that from this menu again you could press Control alt l to do this as well and now our background is nicely illuminated by our light and our foreground is in complete darkness. Now the reason for that is that our light isn't in front of the foreground yet. It's created at a default position of zero in the z-axis and that's the same spot our foreground layer is sitting. So we need to move the light out toward the camera. Let's set the z-value to 1000 and that moves the light out front so that it's illuminating our foreground and background layers. If I switch to the top view there you can see now here's our light, here's our foreground, and there's our background plane. So we need to have the light up front so that it is shining on our foreground layer. Now to create our shadow. You might remember the first thing we need to do is in the light properties for our light we need to turn cast shadows on. So we'll tick that on and we have no shadow yet because we need to do the same for our foreground layer. So we need to select our foreground video layer. Let me close these just to get them out of the way. Then open the materials for that layer and enable casts shadows. And when we do that, boom, we have a shadow behind our foreground layer. And now that our shadow is there, we can switch back to the light controls and use these properties to adjust the appearance of the shadow. So to make your shadow darker or lighter, you can adjust the opacity. And to adjust how soft or hard the edge of the shadow is, we can adjust the diffusion. And when you're making these adjustments, it's a good idea to examine any shadows that exist in footage that might be involved in your composite as you can use that for reference and match the appearance of the shadows you create to the actual shadows that were on set or on location when you filmed and that way you can get very convincing results. If you don't have shadows for reference then a few pointers to keep in mind. Um, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent is a good starting point for the opacity. Of course you can adjust it from there as needed. And for shadow diffusion the rules are a large light source creates softer shadows, a small light source creates hard shadows, and a very close light source creates softer shadows, a more distant light source creates harder shadows. To understand that better think of a cloudy sky where basically the entire sky is your light source, it's a very large light source, and so you get soft shadows. Compare that to the sun where there's just one small point in the sky, it's a very small light source and the shadows it creates are much harder. Okay, one more thing to keep in mind with shadows is that on the layer that's receiving the shadows, in this case it's our background plane and the shadows being cast onto that plane. So in the materials for our plane there's a receives shadows option. 
And this is on by default, so typically it's not something you have to worry about. But if we turn that off, you can see we no longer have a shadow. So if you're trying to create a shadow and it's not working and you're trying to puzzle out why, then you might double check this setting just to make sure that it didn't get turned off at some point because that also has to be enabled in order for the shadow to be created. Okay, now let's take a minute to look in greater detail at the materials for our layers. Now to do that, I'm going to switch back to our foreground layer and then we can look at these various properties and see how they affect the way that our layer and the lights interact. So the first one, illuminated, if I turn that off, you can see there our layer is not affected at all by the lights. No matter what lights we set up, they're not going to affect the appearance of that layer. It's going to look just like it did in the original video clip. Receives shadows, we just looked at for our background plane. Casts shadows, we already turned on for this layer. And if you recall, that controls whether or not it creates a shadow. And this option, casts shadows if layer disabled, if we turn that on, this allows you to create a shadow from this layer even if we turn the visibility of the layer off. So even though we can't see our layer, HitFilm knows it's there and can create the shadow accordingly. Ambient only applies if you're using an ambient light and controls how much light is reflected off of the layer. So adjusting it now has no effect because our light source is not ambient. But if I switch back to our light layer and choose ambient, then when we go back to our video layer and make an adjustment to the ambient setting, it controls how much of that ambient light is reflected off of our video layer. And at 100%, it's receiving the full force of that ambient light. The rest of the controls relate to the other light types. So let's switch this back from ambient to point. And then back in the properties for our video layer, we can use the diffuse setting to adjust how much light from those non-ambient sources is reflected off of the layer, controlling how bright the layer becomes. Specular and shininess can make your object appear to be hard and shiny. Specular reflections are created when the surface of the object is shiny enough that you actually begin to see a mirror image of the light source being reflected in the surface of the object. And so as we increase the specular setting for this layer, the whole layer gets much brighter as if we were seeing a reflection of the light source coming off of the layer into the camera. So there it has its normal appearance, it's relatively flat and we can increase these settings. They have to work together but you can adjust those to give your object a shinier appearance. The emissive control allows your layer to have a color even when no lights are turned on. So we can just click the color swatch to open the color picker and we'll choose a bright blue, how about? And now since the layer is emitting that color, the darkest that any part of that layer can be is the emissive color we've assigned. And if we turn the lights off, the layer is now emitting that blue color even when no lights are present in the scene. And if we change that emissive color to a lighter color closer to white, you can see how much brighter the layer becomes when we turn the lights back on. So this isn't typically something you'll use for video layers, but it can be very useful for particle layers and other effects like that. Okay, to finish off our look at the materials controls, let's add a 3D preset to our project because there are a couple of controls in the 3D layer materials that are unique to that type of layer. I'm going to turn our foreground layer off and then I will go in and I will turn off cast shadows if layer disabled to get rid of our shadow there as well. And now we can focus more on this particle effect that we're looking at. And as we look at the materials here, you can see we have two new options, billboarded lights and billboarded shadows. Billboarded lights lights each particle as if the texture applied to it were directly facing the light. So if I turn that on, you'll see our whole layer gets a little bit brighter there. I'm going to go in and reduce the brightness of our light. Just turn that intensity down a bit so we can see the textures in our cloud better. And now, let me select the light again. As I adjust the position of the light, you can see that the appearance of our particles doesn't really change. You can see this area of the background plate getting darker as the light moves away. 
but the actual cloud is pretty much staying the same color. Now if we go back into the properties of our particles and turn billboarded lights back off, now notice the effect on the cloud as we move the light back and forth. It's much more dramatic, it's much more accurate to real life, and so that's why by default this option is turned off. But if you need to turn that on to light your effect more evenly for whatever reason, that option is there. The second option, Billboarded Shadows, is similar. It casts the shadows as if the textures are directly facing the light, resulting in shadows that are a bit heavier and more solid. So if we turn Cast Shadows on, we have this shadow on the wall from our particles, and then I activate Billboarded Shadows, it does have a subtle effect on the shadow. So this just gives you a little bit more control over how the lights interact with the layers. That property is turned off by default, but it is there in case you need it. Well, hopefully now you have a better idea of how to use the lights and the materials properties in HitFilm more effectively. Thanks for watching, and as you apply these techniques, please share the results that you get with us. We'd love to see what you're doing with the software. And subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you haven't yet, so that you don't miss any of our additional tutorials in the future. Thank <laughs> you.